Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Douglas Gibson from um, Enfigo. Um, I'm the CEO and founder um, of the business. Um, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, we are now, I'm out of the UK today. If you can just jump on the chat and let me know where you're all coming in from. Um, just adding in one of our presenters. Um, <clears throat> let me know where you're all coming in from today. So just go to the chat and just let me know. We had a real ecoleptic mix this morning from Sydney to South Africa and um, from Europe. Hey, Jess. Thanks, hey, buddy. Sorry for that. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, let me know where you are in the chat and we'll say hello to you guys um, while we're just waiting for a few more others to join us. Um, Clyde, we've got some guys from Washington. And Cleveland, um, I've got Erwin and Sean. Um, so Erwin's um, coming over from Canada. We've got uh, lovely Greg from Sussex. Um, hey, Steve, where are you, whereabouts are you based, buddy? Um, let us know. Um, hey, Hussein. Um, Minneapolis, awesome. So we've got a, a mix across the states today. Um, we've got a few more people joining us. So today um, we're very kindly joined by... Um, three of our um, great clients, um, Erwin from Coba, um, I've got Sean um, from Talion, and Jess from Pizu. Um, I'm going to be just let them do a quick introduction. So I'm just going to put, put over to that, Erwin. I'll, I'll kick you off first and just do a quick intro. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Erwin Drever. I'm the VP of technology here at Cobra. Um, Cobra is a 105-year-old company. That is, uh, we like to deem ourselves the continual startup because we always venture down new paths with new technology and so forth and so on. Um, and uh, it's great to be with you, everybody, today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Erwin. Over to you, Sean. I'm Sean. I'm the owner of Talent Action Group, and uh, we're a general commercial firm with digital, and our focus is generally on uh, data automation, automating programs either for franchises or business units like that that are looking to uh, take the data, turn it into print. So it's good to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. And Jess? My name is Jesse Brooks. I am the web development manager at PZ Printing. Um, we are a family-owned business, been in business since 1962. Uh, we do wide format, um, offset. We do package and printing. We do uh, all-around printing. And we are uh, glad to be working with Infigo, uh, automating a lot of different customers. Uh, and it's been a real pleasure working with them. Awesome. Thanks very much, Jess. And thank you very much, Erwin and Sean. So, guys, we've got some great customers with quite a wide variety of experience. So um, we're going to be diving into um, some of their experience in, in, with Invigo and also the general technology play um, as, as we pro progress today. Um, just before um, I kick off into the main event, I just want to give a little... A bit of info about Infigo and what we do. Um, so I'm just going to um, put that over. So who are we? So Infigo are a specialist business in around um, personalized print and e-commerce. We build online portals, online storefronts that allow you guys to be able to sell, procure, um, and manage print online, um, either that directly with the clients um, or even directly with yourself, direct to um, consumers um, and things like that. It's a fully configurable solution um, that is scalable and can integrate into multiple different environments um, and provides many options for um, de developing integrations with either client-side applications or internally um, to things like your MIS systems um, and beyond. Um, and I know the guys that are on today have got multiple different integrations, whether it be to MIS or other third-party solutions um, running today. So I'm um, quite excited to have their feedback. Um, so who is Infigo? Well, I, I always sort of, as I'm presenting and talking to customers, um, of course, we have a product and that is very important to the, the story. But really, the, the, the bit that I believe that sets us apart, um, apart from my craziness, um, is, is our people and their knowledge. The people that we have in the business really stretch out um, into a wide um, variety of skills um, and the knowledge of both the product, the industry, um, and the customers they serve and the partner products that we partner with is really unparalleled. And I think that sets us apart from a lot of the clients that we um, work with both today 
um, and as we develop in the future. Um, so that just gives you a bit of a rounding for those that are not um, familiar with the, the, the business, um, just a little bit of an overview of, of where we come from. Um, supported by the guys, as I say. So really how we promote and talk about um, the business in terms of its tailored solutions. So um, although Infigo as a platform is a white label product, um, it can be tailored to your end requirements needs, um, both from a skinning perspective, a workflow perspective, an integration perspective. One of the biggest growing requirements that we've seen in the last 18 months is things like single sign-on and punch out, something that um, probably pr prior to the pandemic, for whatever reason, um, we never seen it. We did a lot of it, but not a huge amount that we've seen in the last couple of years. So we're seeing a huge growth in, in those integration. Um, everything we do is obviously delivered through a web portal. Um, we have some amazing um, editing controls, um, plenty of customer communication, whether it be via API um, or you, through our message templates. Plenty of integration that I talked about and, and mentioned. Um, one of the big uses that we're seeing a lot more, um, especially with the remote workforce, is the governance um, in terms of the reporting, who's doing what, um, the approvals and budgets and other things like that um, as well. And then, obviously, the most important, um, analytics. Who's using the system? What value are you putting through the system? How many users are logging in? Um, and what success that they're getting from the system. So that's a little bit about um, what we're doing um, a, 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 as a business. So today I want to talk to you about hyper growth um, through web to print um, So in today's ever-involving business, um, we, we, we need to be able to um, find new ways of doing business. Um, our customers are changing. How we interact with our customers are changing. Um, and we need to look at ways of how we can still continue to grow the business and manage the processes and our customers in a, a way that is probably a little bit different than we have in the past. But one of the things when speaking to some of our clients over the last 12, 18 months is how can we make that predictable? Um, and I want to share some thoughts to the, with you today on how we can actually help and some of the tools that we have found as a business has helped us provide um, some metrics that allow predictability in how we go to market as a strategy. Um, we also need to, to look at how we change from a typical model. A lot of our customers used to be on the phone, in the office, and we can get a hold of them very quickly. Now they're going to be dispersed. Now they might be um, not even in an office. They could be working from home. They could be working in a different location. So how do we handle those different customers? How do we make sure that we can keep the communication high, um, but make sure that we can have the right information um, to these customers. And we've really found, um, and we run a session, the second session we've done today with some of the clients tomorrow, and I'm going to ask the guys in a second about how some of the, 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 the benefits of Web2Print have really helped in the, the last 12 to 18 months. But the important thing is we need to get the foundations um, correct on, on, on how we do that and how we manage that um, um, as a business. And something that I'm going to be talking about today, um, which I've trademarked, um, well, it's in the post I hear, um, is something called a hyper-growth frame framework. The who, the what, um, the how, um, and, and then the review of that process. Um, and what I want to do is just um, go over to our, our, our lovely panel um, and just hear from, from the guys. Um, I'll do this in order. Um, Erwin, um, just say some of the things that have, have you found that have been most beneficial, whether it just it doesn't need to be web to print, just technology is a, a, a general um, with what's gone on um, in the last, um, last, last 12 months, 18 months. Yeah, the, it's certainly been a different, uh, different time frame for the last little while. Um, and technology has, uh, has had to evolve and we've had to evolve our technologies to be able to facilitate um, a communication with our customers directly, but um, ultimately communications in some cases with their customers, uh, their users, um, the, the, the whole on-demand side of our business has uh, grown exponentially over the last little while uh, through a combination of things. Um, <coughs> and, and as a direct result, we've had to look at 
a lot of different technologies. I think one of the keys and one of the, the, the big things is, especially when you're looking, you know, in all technologies and, and from a web to print perspective directly, um, is that whatever system you're design, des deciding on, um, it has to be able to integrate with either your own systems internally or other platforms that Absolutely. you may use or even customer platforms. Um, that's probably been the, the biggest change that we've seen um, is that um, it's it's no longer just web to print, and we've been doing web to print for probably fifteen. Yeah, yeah, you guys have been doing it quite a while, <laughs> right? So it's 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 not new to us, but the the integration component of that is new. And um, as D Doug knows, it's probably one of the reasons that we've actually migrated to Infigo off of previous platforms is the ability to integrate within that system, and not just uh, not just customer systems, but even our own internal workflow systems, so that you know everything is as automated and, and and seamless as possible. Awesome. Thank you very much. So just to summarize there, if that, if that makes sense, um, is um, integration um, important um, and making sure the systems don't sit on their own and that they're part of the, the, the key areas of the business. Um, and then also addressing how the customer communication has changed as well. Would that be, would that be fair? Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. So heading over to Sean. Hey, Sean. Um, so Hello. So I think for us, it's it's. Um, I certainly would echo what Erwin said in terms of the automation and in terms of the integrations. It's. I think for us to run a business and, and do it uh, profitably and efficiently nowadays, you need that. Uh, so absolutely agree with that. For us, I think what we've seen and and we also migrated from a different uh, web to print platform about two years ago onto Infigo. For us, the change in the last year has been the client reception, their, their willingness to chat with us about web to print storefronts. Um, since we do nice. so much more of a kind of centralized, decentralized business model, franchises and business units like that, for us, it's not the on-demand piece. It's really how can we facilitate their buying habits faster, easier. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that's protecting that. brand with creative work. Sometimes that's just approval processes and budgets controls. But with everybody being more remote in the last year, we've definitely seen clients being more receptive to talking about that. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, it's been more of a, a sales changer for us. It's, it's been how we've gotten our foot in the door more with more customers, growing the relationships deeper. And so it's, it's really been kind of on that growth side. It's been a real catalyst for us. Oh, that, that, is, that is really insightful. Thanks, Sean. So, so quick summary there, guys. So you're seeing um, a, new, a new tool to communicate with clients. Um, in a way that they're actually coming to you, not just a, oh, hey, guys, we got web to print, but something that you're actually finding is a demand being driven directly from the customer. And then secondly, um, a, a, a sales tool enabler that you can actually go out and sell a new product or service to the customers um, from that point of view. Fantastic. That's really that's really great. Thanks, Sean. Um, and last but definitely not least, um, over to you, Jeff. So just building off what, both Erwin and, and Sean said it really is a value added proposition for our customers. I mean, they they see our ability to match uh, not just to, to buy print, but to to match the, the quality that they can do in their own design programs uh, online uh, quickly and, uh, and effectively. It really um, it really is a leg up on the competition. Nice. So being able to offer that rounded solution, um, what I'm hearing, Jess is is giving you that um, sort of tool set to go for your sales guys to be able to offer a better offering than your your competitors. So helping close out the competition with offering a rounded tool set is that is that is that fair? It sounds right. Awesome. Well, that, that that's fantastic. Thank thanks guys um, for, for for that insight. So just turning back to to some of the key areas, and it's brilliant to hear. Um, I can talk all day long, which most of you uh, that know me will know. And I've got a few people just coming in. Hey, Craig, uh, I'm over in California. Hey, Lin Linda, um, how's things uh, over in Saskatchewan? Uh, I guess it's getting cold. Um, we've got Hussein as well um, in the UK. Hey, guys, thanks for joining. Um, and we've got Guy as well from California as well. So thanks for joining in. So <clears throat> let's let's look at this. The who, the what, the how, the review. So. Um, often I get asked when I sit with, with meetings of owners of businesses or um, various different levels of the businesses, right, who, who owns web to print and, and I think it would be fair to say um, that web to print uh, has always been looked at, not by every business, um, but a lot of businesses as a, oh yeah, we have it. 
and the, the amount of uh, the amount of people I say if I bump into somebody at a show or do you have web sprint use? Yeah, we have it. And it's like, it just becomes something that may sit on the shelf or is a nice to have um, when a customer wants. And it doesn't really form part of the core proposition. So I think we, 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 we need to change that, that, that thought and that methodology that you have a key person within the business that owns the, 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 the solution, but also has a number against it, has a strategy. Um, the business can sell and demonstrate the proposition um, often we talk about it, but actually, what can we show? Do we have the right tools and things like that? Um, and then once you've done the, all the good work, you've got the strategy in place, you're now selling some systems, then how can we train it? Um, how can we get people set up? How can we make the configuration changes um, that people want? So I, that, that's described what I would say is the, the who. Um, the what. So what is the solution we're going to offer? And I think this is, is, is a really, really important part of the what is because ultimately what you want to do is you want to set up the tools and the offerings. The product that we offer for Figo is quite broad. Um, so you want to pick the, the, the tools and the offerings that, that you believe that you can absolutely execute on. Just mentioned that it closes out the competition. The competition will be coming in and say, we offer web to print, but that's what we needed to do many years ago. So we need to think about it as a proposition. How is it a feature as a core part of a business? What's it called? Give it a brand, give it a name, um, and what it's including for the customer when they're onboarding with such a, um, a such a solution. The how. How do we market it and sell it? This is, this is something that I would say is almost less than 10% of people actively go out and promote it other than the salesmen um, that are going out and, and, and talking about. So what we've, we've now got a great name. We've got a strategy. We know what's included. Well, how are we going to go out and sell it? How do we onboard it? How do we change the business culture within the organization to allow mass adoption? That it becomes a product, a service within the business that is completely on um, everybody's in agreement with that we need such a solution and it allows more rapid adoption. Um, the management piece we've talked about and then very important is the scale, which I'm going to come on in a little bit. And then the last piece of, of this um, of this framework is really the review um, and, and what's going on. So we've got 20 storefronts. We've got 50 storefronts. We've got 1,000 orders coming in every minute or whatever it may be. Is, is that what we our class of clients are actually um, reward, want and what they need? Um, is this solution delivering value for our customers and is it de delivering value for our business with that client? Are you meeting customers' goals? Have we aligned those goals? Is everything set up to the customer's liking? Any changes required? And very importantly, that we continue and to agree and, and, and review the, the next steps with the client. So I'm just going to um, get James to run um, our first poll. And if you guys, you'll see a little pop-up. Um, and I, I'd be interested to see what the who, the what, the how, and the review process that you have running within your business. Um, at the moment. And, and while you guys are doing that, um, Paul, I'm just going to ask um, the guys quickly their thoughts on, on these four areas and which one that they feel they, they either have got nailed in the business or would like to improve. And I'm going to reverse the order. I'm going to go to Jess this time and, and just your thoughts on, on, on which one of these so far um, you would see as, as important. Thanks, Jess. Well, I, I definitely don't think that I've got it all nailed down. I mean, it's a it's a struggle every day to to keep it uh, organized in a sense. But uh, <laughs> but I think honestly, the the most important is the the how. You, you've got to know how you're using these tools. I mean, Absolutely. I, I do yeah. know how. Uh, I do know who's responsible. I'm responsible to make sure that these things are are built and utilized and put in the hands of uh, the right salespeople, the right customers, rather. Um, I know what we're trying to accomplish most of the time, although that that isn't always true. Uh, sometimes I just think I do. And then knowing how to use it, though, and, and how to um, get the customer to engage. It, I, I don't know how everyone else has been. If you built a storefront or you built products and you expect people to order and then nothing happens, that that's incredibly frustrating. That points usually to a failure of mine. In one yeah, way, I, yeah. I, I own it. 
Uh, so we don't want to do that. I don't want to waste time and effort. Um, so, so knowing upfront how this is going to be used uh, and what's expected of all parties all throughout the production workflow is, is really important. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Really insightful. Thanks, Jess. Sean? So I, I'd say for us, it's it's really been more of the, the what part and the review part. I think we're, we are constantly in review, right? And, and awesome. that's why we've obviously changed systems over years as, as well, mm -hmm. just to keep up with the client demand or our own internal production team demand. But I think the the what has been really important to us, certainly in the last year or two, not just driven because of the pandemic, but driven just because of customer change and their kind of their maturity. We've seen that offering a storefront, if you will, to one particular industry is very different than offering to a different industry. Um, so our clients, some of them in, in a particular industry, may be all about decentralizing their, <laughs> their collateral and their creative uh, build and getting the ability for franchisees to do those work that work remotely um, while still protecting brand. And then in some cases, it's really a matter of it's a sales function for us. It's a better offering. So we have clients that order the same products over and over, but they might have 30 locations and we're able to expose them to the storefront to other products they may not yeah, buy. Yeah, brilliant. So it becomes a sales tool for us. So, so I say the what has been our focus. I think you go through all of these cycles probably that you've outlined here, but the what yes. has been our focus. Um, in the review is constant, so. Ah, that's fantastic. Thanks, Sean. Erwin? Well, I, I'm, I'm struggling to pick one particular area that, that <laughs> the, the, the challenge for us, because um, I think Sean just kind of mentioned it. Um, cyclically, you do a lot of these things. Yeah, um, absolutely. Over and over again. And our team has been really good, especially over the last year and change about the who, um, the what, um, the how is still uh, occasionally, I don't say it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because um, as what we found, and, and Sean kind of mentioned it across different industries, but even across different customers, uh, while the core functionality and the core technology is somewhat standardized, every individual customer has their own take on how they want to use it, what they want to use it for, um, and all of those things. So it's just being aware of that and understanding that and then reviewing it going forward. Um, and then... I think there's probably something that's not on here and it's it's related to the hyper growth conversation is what happens when you get so much that you don't, you can't do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's not meant to be an, an arrogant comment or anything, any case, but we've been. No, uh, no, no. We've been working well, with you're planning for a while strategy, right now. the execution. And yeah. in our, in our history, we hit a lull with, with web to print. Um, and then the pandemic hit and, just I think it was just prior to the pandemic, actually, when we when we sw when we switched and started migrating platforms over and we're still not done migrating, which is a, a bit of a pain point for us to get our older platforms on the Infigo platform. And the only reason is that because like, honest to goodness, every month ish, we probably get two or three new opportunities that we're starting on. Yeah. yeah so it's a juggle of do I take and, in the current and, uh, guys? Uh, or the new yeah, the snowball is kind of rolling down the hill right now. So it's been an interesting challenge. But, um, you know. Um, all part of, I think uh, Jesse mentioned earlier, having the tool set and being able to show it to your customers and understanding what they want and need and and just Infigo being able to provide it's been a been a huge benefit. Nice and so what sometimes I look at these sorts of things and and, and you, you you guys all be familiar is is, is is trying to refer back to like more of an MVP, so giving customers uh, uh, some of the minimum part of the product to get them going. And, and maybe building some of the other parts out as well. But yeah, no, absolutely um, um, love those um, feedback. Thank you very, very much, um, Erwin. So um, just moving um, along to, 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 to each of these areas in a bit more depth, they'll actually cover um, some of the, the, the areas highlighted um, by the guys as, as well. So um, if, if we're just going to focus in now um, on the who. So... Num number one, and I, and I bang on about this, and people that I've visited um, I, and I talk about this, is is we need to, it, it, same way as we say, right, we want to go from 10 million to 100 million in the business. We need to say, right, this is a business unit. This is a business area. Um, we need to be able to put um, that, that, that sort of strategy and who's going to own that. Um, and I think often um, with this, it sort of sometimes sits within sales, um, because they're supposed to go and sell it, and then Jess will get ear, an elbow because he hasn't he hasn't been set up, and and it's that sort of stuff. But it, it's building a team and being very clear on the team 
that is, 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 is responsible for the implementation, responsible for the strategy, and will, will allow the growth opportunities for, for, for that to come. Um, and really, I, I look at this as who will sell, um, and I talk about the demonstration. Um, they, they, they all say plumbers' pipes are never the, the ones that are fitted first, um, but it is, it's always true. We, 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 we want to sell. We want to talk about it. Um, we've identified the people, but actually we haven't got the best tools to be able to do that. Um, and we don't want to be just showing customers and um, sites to, 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 to put prospects and things like that. So make sure that you've got those um, pieces on who can sell it, have they got the tools and things like that. Um, and then as we, as we touched on um, heavily by the guys, who will install that? So if we get a situation where we are growing, we are getting this um, growth, then actually um, we need to make sure we be able to install that. And that could be a hybrid approach. It could be that we do some internally, we outsource some of that work. Um, obviously, Infigo can take um, some of that on as well. And we've got other partners, I think Steve with us today from Devia, um, that have done some work for us, um, supporting our clients and things like that. So it doesn't just have to be an all-in business. It can be a very much a hybrid touch that um, you're working that as well. Um, and, and also... Um, one of the things um, that that is important is is is, is setting those um, time frame. Who's speaking to the customer, letting them know um, about what's going on um, um, with the system. So, <clears throat> as as we move on um, from the, from the who um, is the what. So so we've got our system. Um, we, we we know what we're doing. Um, we need to be very clear in what our offering is going to be to our customers. We need to understand um, what it is we're doing. Um, I'd recommend on putting some branding, giving the product a logo, um, putting a, a, a brief description together about what it is, um, and not going to your customers with just the flavor of web to print because you'll just be competing against millions of people. So um, really putting some of that brand the proposition um, and make sure that we're clear. Um, I mentioned around the business plan um, and the goals of, of what it is we're trying to do. Um, what are we trying to um, create? Um, how many customers are we looking to onboard? How are we going to do that? And, and building all of that um, key part is what is it we're offering? What do we want to achieve as a business? And then um, I think um, Sean touched on this, is, is the target customer. Who, who are you going after? Because often I, I speak to clients and he just says, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Moradog and I'm going to start selling uh, web to print. Brilliant. Who are you going to sell it to? Everyone. Ah, which is a great philosophy. But does that fit into the, what we're offering? And does that fit on, 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 on who we really want to, to, to deliver? So putting some key, uh, we call it in the software world, avatars. Um, we call it your target customer. There's lots of different names, but actually being very clear um, on the, the, the target customer that you're going after. Um, and then, yeah, what are the timelines? Being, being clear, um, both internally, um, and we all know timelines are there to be um, <laughs> worked on. <laughs> the, the timelines of software and technology and print um, is a never moving um, challenge. So, but what are, what are the timelines that you're working towards and, and what does that look like um, from, from a customer um, perspective? Um, and, then, and then the how. So we've done this. Um, we're, 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 we've, we've identified who's going to do it in the business. We've identified what we're going to sell. But actually, how are we going to take it to market? How do we sell it? Um, and obviously, we can't go to exhibitions, the local fairs or meeting people. Some of the networking business events have changed. So we have to change our marketing, our approach. We have to change on how our business strategies now go to market. So you need to, uh, once you've identified those clear markets, um, you need to identify, well, how are you going to get in touch with those people? How many people do you need to get in touch with? Looking at your things like your email lists, looking at um, social contact lists and things like that. Maybe some people you previously engaged with. So you build yourselves a nice list. You then work out how you want to target that list. Um, and I'd absolutely make sure and beg you to make sure that that's in a CRM system. I had a joke this morning that the first thing I learned when I was a child was not how to write, 
ride a bike, but how to operate a CRM system. Um, but I think it probably was um, just in very different ways. But make sure that you've now got your list, you've now got your target. Um, how do you um, be able to target those? And then use your CRM system to help manage some of the responses and targets to that. And the important thing when we're doing that is then put some metrics in place. If you would like to onboard five new clients per month or per year, whatever it may be, then you need to set yourself some standards and measure that as well from a sales process. So if you'd like to onboard five new clients, I need to re reach out on a monthly basis to a thousand. I need to turn those thousand into 250. I need to turn those 250 into 20 demos. And out of those 20 demos, I know I'm going to get, provide a fantastic quote. They're going to love my offering, the branding I've delivered for them. Um, in terms of the solution, and I need to be able to um, close off five of those. So put some metrics in place because this is absolutely important because what that will allow you to do is when you work out your metrics from a sales perspective, you can then sit down with the key business owners and say, well, I'm going to be onboarding. Aaron was saying, I'm going to be onboarding all these new clients, but I've also got on boards of these other clients. So we need to be able to planning 12, 18 months ahead that I'm going to need some either some other people or I'm going to need some external um, resource to manage that because we want to make sure that when we sell it to them, we can onboard them. Um, as, 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 as we say, we need to make sure that we can manage them. So once our customers are onboarded, we need to, to, to make sure that we're reaching out to them to make sure they're happy. It could be a simple survey that's driven from our CRM system. You could be using for, um, um, software such as um, survey monkey or job form um, to be able to communicate with them, see where they're happy, look at the time scale um, and be able to go there. And then really, once you've got some of these identifiers, how are we going to go to scale? So one of the most important things that we've been probably um, not the greatest at is actually going back to our customers and asking them what, how they've found the success um, and then being able to talk about that, promote that, both for our benefit and helping the customers that they can use, whether it be a case study going back out to there. So once you've got the, 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 the key, key uh, market, you've now um, got an understanding of the list that you want to go after, um, we then need to be able to talk about, well, actually, yes, we've got this scenario. We provide it to this customer. Um, as Sean said, um, we understand how it works within that key franchise market. And now I'm going to go and find the next franchise customer. And you then use those vertical and targeting um, sales to be able to get that because you've got to win in that scenario and you go after it from that part of the marketplace. Um, and, that's, and, that's, and that's very important. Um, so I'm just going to go and ask the guys a second. So in terms of, of, of the how, how do you guys, how are you, um, uh, and how are you selling um, web to print at the moment? Is there, have you guys created a brand for this? Have you um, created a separate, is it, does it form? Would you see it forming? part of the total business or is it a side area? How, how, how do you guys um, sort of sell this at the moment? So um, much like you've already described, we actually actively um, about 18 months ago, rebranded the whole side of the business, this side of this portion of the business. Um, so it's not just web to print. Um, the marketing group came up with the name of it is actually passcode. Um, the logo looks like it's Lovely. code XML or something like that. Um, um, and they did a great job of it. We did, we obviously created um, a demo site based around that whole brand, um, and then and then um, created collateral marketing material to go along with that that our sales team has access to. And um, our sales team is actually really good about working with our our web to print group to say, you know, if there's a a, a serious lead, they bring the team in right away, and and Brilliant. and our lead people will do the dem demonstrations, talk like that flesh out all the details and work through it. So it, it's a, it's a uh, unique but blended part of the business because it ties into other things that we do, you know, obviously print, warehousing, uh, fulfillment, distribution, all of that. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a service component of everything that we do with its own brand. Um, and, and just it's, it's sold by the entire sales group. Amazing. Fantastic. And it's great to hear that, that, that my thoughts and methodology, although not maybe the brand new, um, but putting it into more uh, a simplified framework, you guys are following that step because 
it's so important that you put these different things in place. And as you said, you've got that success where you're having to maybe slow down the onboarding process and things like that as well. I'd definitely get Greg to reach out to see if we could get some more of, of these ones onboarded um, for you as well. Um, Sean. Uh, so for us, <clears throat> we've kept it under the, the company brand. And mm -hmm. I think because we're so specific in a few markets, it's it's worked for us in that sense. But we have changed a little bit of our sales approach. Um, we've definitely been promoting web to print um, functionality, very specific functionality. So if we're going after like a spirit market, because we do a lot of spirit and wines, we're really talking about their needs that they have when they're going into retail to do merchandising and how this yeah, will yeah. save them. Very, time, very targeted. Cost. Love that. So getting very targeted. Um, and so we're doing a lot of PPC campaigns around those items. We're also doing geo target around conferences that are taking place. So, but very specific nice. to an industry and that's really shifted kind of how we're doing it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, so going back to the, what is it we're trying to, who, what are we trying to sell? Who are we trying to sell to? And, and then putting a market plan around and um, going to market. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Jesse. So ours is kind of a mixed bag. We have, Customers, uh, it's very specific, already existing customers um, that some of our sales people will um, rely more heavily on the web to print portion. They want to control branding. They want to control spot colors and, and all that for a wide variety of products for specific customers like the universities and such. Um, but then we also have some salesmen who have done very little of it. But as of late, they're getting a lot more interested in bringing in yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> yeah, they, they, are. they are. And and then new customers. They're, yeah. um, we had a, an opportunity with um, uh, the Utah Jazz to put together a little demo for them. Um, and uh, because we didn't have, well, it, it all worked out. But uh, it's, it's, it's fun to see the, the new opportunities uh, recently popping up. And it's, it's forcing a lot of uh, uh, growth on our end. So um, it's, it's been good. Yeah, absolutely awesome. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? Is success breeds success. Um, as, as, as sales organization, you always, you'll have your one or two stars or many stars that they, they will feed off the success of, of others. So if they see people having success, it will drive them in. Um, and, and at that point, as you say, you need to make sure um, that the tools and everything um, are there for them to, 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 to be able to, um, to, to, to deliver that. So, um, moving moving um, on to my um, <clears throat> last couple of slides. So the review process, and um, this is something um, as a as, as a CEO, as a, as a founder of this business, I've been working heavily on um, in the last twelve to eighteen months. We've never done so much internal change as we have done. And some people say that's crazy. Some people say it's probably not the best time, but. I took, uh, I, I took it as a time where I had a bit more time to think um, to actually see on how we want to go forward as a business. So I, I used the, 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 the quiet, the 12 to 18 months um, of, of re reviewing of how we go to market, reviewing of, of what success our customers are, are, are getting on the product and, and, and what we can do better. Um, hence, one of the discussions we're having today on this webinar on what we can do better to deliver for our customers. So I think that review process within your customers, within the, 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 the general business is so important. Did we achieve the numbers? Is, is, the, is the process working? So once you've set it out with the customers, you're reviewing the timeline, go back to the customers and ask them, hey, we put a web print system in. We put the solution in for you. And you've only had 40 orders. Why is that? Well, so-and-so went on holiday, now they don't order. Um, if you didn't have that review process, you'd never have known that. So making sure that you have these conversations, that you go back, make sure you're talking on a regular basis, maybe use your CRM system just to ping an automatic moat every 30, 60, 90 days, whatever it may be, um, so that they can reply back, hey, don't want to pester you, but how are things going? Um, and then once you've reviewed that, are there any changes? How do I get changes back into the organization? How do I focus that? And as you agree those changes in the review, um, make sure that you put some, some key actions, not just for yourselves, but actually for your customer to say, and you can have it as a review, as part of your review process, when you next meet, is, is, um, is, is say, right, well, we agree these three things. These are the three things I'm going to do. These are the three things you're going to do. How have we done? 
oh, by the way, orders have gone crazy. Yeah, that's because we did some more training and that's gone really successful. So shall we run some more training for the next three months and things like that? But review, 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 agree actions, agree who's going to own those things and, and drive those back into the business, both internally in your organization and back into the, your customer's organization um, for, for, from that point of view. So some really interesting information there from, from, from our customers um, and um, hopefully some interesting information from the, some of the slides that were shared as well. So I'm just going to run um, one last poll. Um, from what you've heard so far today, um, <clears throat> if we can just kick that off, um, well, how do you think um, that we could potentially um, help achieve further um, into that sphere of hyper growth within the business. Um, and that's something I'm, as that's running, I'm going to directly um, go back out to our, our, our panel um, and um, speak to them um, very direct. How could Infigo, and this isn't rehearsed, they might tell me good things, they might tell me bad things, but I'm very um, open and honest to this. How could Infigo, what's maybe the number one or two things that Infigo could do either as a business or as a software product to help you drive some hyper growth in the next 12 to 18 months. I'm going to go to Sean. Okay, so I get the least preparation. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I mean, being candid, we, we've loved Infigo, right? I mean, we, I okay. think the last Thank update, you. the major update you guys hear. did last year was phenomenal. It, it really addressed, you've, you've kept current with UX UI demand you know, sped up latency issues, like everything that needs to happen in a market where you're doing e-commerce, you, you've addressed really well. Thanks so um, much, for, It's really great to hear. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's candy. You're a great group to work with. I think for us, if, if I have to identify one thing is um, your API connections are great. We haven't worked a lot with them. That's kind of our next thing um, is making sure that, that that technical ability to do that is remains there, right, and continues to open up even further. Nice. Um, we are moving a, to a new MIS right now. We're going live in a couple of weeks. So, it, mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing where everything is and it's already very good, but it just keeping that open architecture so we continue to do more custom work on our side to then yeah. feed into Ego and use your engine from there forward through production is, is probably our key. Love that. So we can help you pushing and, and continue to develop some of the API and infrastructure. Yeah, um, yeah. we with the rebrand, um, we, we, we've, we, we've, we've pushed that into something called EFI, um, EFI. Uh, they'll love that. That's why going back to about 20 years ago, that is, <laughs> um, so we've got Infigo connect, um, which is, um, all about that API and that integration from that point of view. Um, so yeah, it is, it's definitely a key part on our roadmap, um, and some of the things that we're discussing. So that's great. Um, Jess, I'm just going to hit that nail right where Sean hit it, that, that's a key for us. And it's not just the one-way API for your systems currently working. It's been great, as you said, the past year, I've seen a lot of development on getting, getting your system to speak with our MIS, yeah. um, but getting that to speak back is gonna be okay. huge. See, when, when, we are, when we mark an order uh, complete in our MIS, we'd love to see that pushed back to Infigo. Uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's got to be two-way mm -hmm. communication. Brought him. Thanks for that. Thanks for the feedback. And 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 Owen. Um, uh, probably just going to keep echoing because it seems to be the the theme. But to be honest, um, uh, as, as Sean said, what you guys have done over the last year has been incredible, and it's it's just created a lot uh, more stable platform, more opportunities, more things to do. So oh, I think brilliant. that's great. Um, I, I, the thing I would suggest is just don't stand still. Um, no, no, I can go. I can guarantee you that with all the blood pumping around my veins that that would all happen. Yeah. And, and keep, the, doing, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. The, the support, the, the, the discussions around API connectivity, SSO, payment activity, feature requests, um, you know, all of that is, is, and recognizing there's you know limited bandwidth to do everything that everybody wants, yeah, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's yeah. un, it's it's just continuing to understand what your customers or you know uh, us and our partners within the Infigo world um, want, need, and require, and and continuing to provide the the support is going to be terrific. No, that's yeah. Thank you very much. It's really really kind. 
Well, so we're, so we're coming in <clears throat> to, the, to the last slide, really, um, and it's it sort of to echo um, really what um, I want to focus as in my next. So, so we run our calendar runs to the end of April. Um, I'm now thinking and planning with my team. We got a session in January. We got a, a, we got face to face in February, and we're going to be bringing the whole business together. Hopefully, um, fingers crossed in um, April. Um, but it's really continuing to reach out to our customers. I learned um, very early on working in some of these big corporations that had some amazing technologies um, that that they had the most amazing tools, but they never spoke to a client. And um, we hope, and, and the feedback today would sound that we're we're on the right 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 track. Is we need to be able to keep listening to um, our clients, and that I, I, I sort of condense into through three areas we've got to make sure that the system that we give you guys is simple to sell and the way that the solution we sell it, it looks the best it's the quickest in the market it integrates easily and um, and we keep delivering um new features it's simple to build it's great being able to set up a system but if it's really complex it takes forever um then it's just not going to be good for your business so we are continuing um, and I've got a, a, a goal that we're within the business. Uh, we, we did a, a great um, webinar with the guys at Inkish called Web to Print in 30 Minutes. Um, and I want to get that down to sub sort of 10 minutes, sub five minutes. Keep pushing the boundary, talking to our customers on how, where's the complications? Where can we add? We, we've spent the last, what well, I think probably two years, maybe two and a bit years working on an InDesign plugin. Why? Because the nature of InDesign and whatever it needs to be is complex and also our, our customer requirements are complex. So we've got to use the, 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 the technology, our, our, our skill set within our business to deliver that in a simple to use interface. And we've got some really exciting things coming out with our, our, our InDesign plug, um, plugin. And then there's the, the guys um, said, excuse me, <clears throat> um, it's got to be able to scale. And that scales in many ways. You've got to be able to scale it as in more users. You've got to be able to scale it as in um, within your business. Um, and you've got to be able to scale it um, within within your um, customers as well. So these are the three key areas that we're um, going to be working on and focusing on in the business. So um, I'd like to, um, that is now me coming to um, my time. And um, if there's any questions, um, we have got a few minutes. If you want to put it in um, in the chat, um, any thoughts, um, ideas? We are going to be launching um, in Q1 um, or, or within Q1 next year um, some tools. Um, if you'd like to get hold of those tools, put some notes in the chat with your name and say yes, please. Um, but if there's anything else um, to add that we can help, just let us know in the chat as well. Um, and then thank you very much for our um, guests today, Erwin, Sean, and Jesse, absolutely brilliant guys, very honest, very um, matter of fact, and directly um, the right information that, that we need to hear, and also the guys that have joined us today. And um, we find also that these um, our webinar, which will be recorded, is recording, um, gets pushed out, and, and lots of people learn from these sorts of things. And one of my big things as a person is I hate wasting energy, and being Scottish, money, um, and I hate, I hate wasting time. Um, and if we can come together, we can share ideas, um, both ourselves and also out with other peers um, within the industry, then we're going to make the, 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 the sector a much better place to organize and operate. So thank you very much um, for your time. And um, I'll just have a quick look if there's any um, key things that are are come are, are coming in so um where we go so a couple of um <laughs> a couple of things david as always um uh, has got something a bit more extended there um why, why why try and catch two rabbits when you can't can catch none and, and i think that's um quite um great there is it it's about focus and being clear of what you're trying to chase um, and, and how you're going to go and get it and what are you going to do once you go and get it. You've caught a rabbit, um, whether it be one, two or none. you now got it. What are you going to do? Uh, how are you going to prepare it? What are you going to do with it? Uh, is it just for fun? It's a great thing. 
Um, Craig, yeah, we've been working with Craig both on and off. He's helped us out in the U.S. and continues to do great work with uh, lots of um, organizations. And, and we, we, uh, uh, Craig was actually a client as well um, as a colleague. Um, we, we worked and showed out how we delivered the business, a business card within 10 minutes. That was his. He said, we already got web to print. I'm already using it. If you can build it quicker than they can, we'll buy your system. Um, and, and that was and that was uh, that was a customer that came on board. So, um, and then Sean just um, re- reiterating about being able to go after your targeted market, understand what target you want, understand the metrics, and then look at the different channels that you can go to market um, and be able to um, and be able to target those, drive it, and things like that. And I'm really really excited. And I'm able to throw this out to Craig. Um, I know you guys are doing some stuff with Mindfire. We'd like to maybe put some campaign stuff together um, and we would help. We'll cover the cost of doing this um, and we'll, we'll maybe put some templates, some email blasts. Um, we're working to, to get at the moment with some um, guys with some clever LinkedIn tools that you can do some um, quite in-depth LinkedIn marketing. So we'll be putting these together um, and we'll work with Erwin and Sean and Jess and others um, to, to, to be able to bring these to market um, towards the end of Q1. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I wish you all a, a, a very happy Christmas. Um, we, we, we're going to be going into holiday season for some. It's crazy time and for some it allows us to um, uh, reflect and maybe put some of these ideas and thoughts that you've learned today, um, but also be safe and, and, and happy of, of everything that you do um, and wish you the best for business for the next um, 12 months and years to come. So thanks, Owen, Sean, Jesse, and everybody who's joined us today. It's been a really great session. Really enjoyed um, hearing these antidotes and, and, and key wins for our clients. So take care and speak very soon. Bye-bye.